Good morning, everyone. Well, in light of uh, Prince Philip passing away last Friday, I thought I'd change a little bit what I originally planned to do and just uh, read a verse from Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. Reflect a little bit about the, uh, his life and some of the uh, news stories that some of you will be very familiar with by now about him and a little bit in relating it to our faith and our journey as citizens of heaven. This is what it says in Philippians 1.27. Only let the manner of your life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I'm absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel. It's interesting in this verse here, it says that let the manner of your life be worthy, or some translations say that um, that you'd live as a citizen of God, or living as a good citizen, worthy of the gospel. And there's a word that's used here, politiomia uh, in Greek, which talks about to, to live as a citizen, um, the obligations of the duty that someone would have as a result of that. And of course, my mind goes to Prince Philip, who uh, people talk about his duty, his loyalty to the crown, loyalty to his role supporting the queen and his commitment to that above all things over many, many years. It's interesting that when this Paul writes this to the Philippians, it was a Roman colony, which where Roman citizenship was highly prized. They were under the had privileges of being a Roman colony, but but also they had the protection of being part of Rome, but also they had purpose and obligations that went with that as being parts of Rome. And so when Paul writes to them about the citizenship on living in a worthy manner of the life which you are called to, it is uh, resonant of their citizenship, which is the people who were trying to live in in light in a manner of worthy to their Roman connections. So we think of Prince Philip, someone who, although he was born in Greece, became a British citizen and obviously integral into British life for so many years, a guy who highly valued, valued his civic duty and responsibility. Um, Saint Enselin, uh, Selim, who was the uh, former Archbishop of Canterbury in the 11th century, said, to sin is to fail to render to God what God is entitled to. And when we become citizens of heaven, we have this obligation, this responsibility of duty to heaven. And it's several things in this verse which I want to pull out, reflecting a little bit about uh, people who are taking a sense of citizenship, their duty, they're, they're living in them a life of a life to be worthy of the gospel of Christ. It's one of them, first of all, is that we have this amazing privilege that we are of one spirit. We're united with Christ by the Holy Spirit. When you reflect upon that, this obliterates any royal privileges that anyone could ever have. The fact that we are citizens of heaven and that we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, a deposit. Just reflect upon that for a moment, that you have God's presence in you. This is better than any earthly crown. And with that becomes a guarantee of our heavenly citizenship, that we are co-heirs with Christ, seated on the, in the heavenly places. Again, this is beyond, beyond any throne which any earthly person can sit on, something which I know the Queen is very much aware of. So we have this privilege of being one in spirit with each other, but also with God. But then we have this one purpose. It says to be of one mind, uh, one purpose, united together. We have a reason, a reason for us to live, to further and advance the gospel. Uh, so often I know with Prince Philip in his early years, apparently he struggled to understand what his role was. Well, we have to be united in Christ, to have one mind and with that one faith. And with that is the gospel that we are to live in light on, to share it with others, to live it out before each other, but also to honour God with. And you may have got up this morning, you're wondering, what's the purpose of my week? What responsibility, what duty, obligation? Well, it's to live as a citizen of heaven, a life that is worthy of the gospel of Christ. And that is one faith 
and that's a faith that we share with together but sharing the good news of Jesus Christ and I just wonder this week what is the citizenship of heaven what's the duty the life that we are supposed to live where is God calling you to live that out that might be with other people you may kids are going back to school you may be in a workplace with other people but obviously we're still in a manner of lockdown but that may be living a life before God it may be how you live your life before others online it may be how you live in what your private world as well as your public places wherever it is we're called to live in a life that honors Christ which furthers his gospel where we know that we're empowered by the Holy Spirit we stand by side by side together for the in faith for the kingdom of God it says this in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 that we're to walk in a money manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called and I just want to encourage you to just reflect a little bit about that our responsibilities our duties that we are called to so let's take a moment to pray shall we Lord we remember those who are grieving at this time Lord I pray for the Queen and the royal family those who are sensing that loss and then in the day their family uh, and uh, other people other families understand that sense of loss sadly in this season so Lord I just pray Lord that um, as I've heard it said that Prince Philip would rest in peace but rise in glory through the faith that he has in Christ I pray that we would also know the privilege of what it is to be citizens of heaven with that Lord the protection the privileges Lord that we have with that but also with that the obligation the purpose that it gives Lord I pray that we'd work that out in whatever context we find ourselves I ask in Jesus name Amen God bless you keep looking to Jesus mm -hmm.